nice and tight. Not too tight. So I've already made $20 from these 3D printers, or at least I'm going to be having made that if once I get paid because I was just tasked with making mandolin picks for a friend who does a lot of music. I've worked out a deal where he'll pay me $10 for every time I have to redesign it. And then every single one that I print uses a tiny bit of plastic. I think like 10 grams of plastic, something like that. It'll be a dollar per. And that way he can actually get custom made little flat picks of the right size and the right curvature and sharpness. And these little three printers seem to do it quite well. And then I, for a, the bigger jobs that I work on, we need a resistive load. And I thought, well, hardware stores do sell sockets for lights, but they're like $3. So instead I went online and I found this model that was honestly mislabeled because whenever you search on principles or Thingiverse, this does not come up. I found it due to Google image search because it's just like bulb holder. It's like, it's a socket. Say something, add some tags to it. Oh, well, but I was able to remix it into this model. And I, I put, I made, I properly labeled my remix because man, it is so difficult to search for 3d models. So already this 3d, these 3d printers are slowly paying themselves off. And I'm thinking I might want to finally really commit into making more money from printing my own things. Now, this isn't quite such a big thing as that initially seems because I've already made several thousand dollars from 3D printing stuff. Like I've been doing this since 2015. That's how I got into 3D printing. That's why it's more of a tool and not so much a joy. The fun came later and more recently, honestly, because the printers are easier to use. The, the printer isn't, I'm not building something in spite of the printer. I'm building something with the printer getting out of my way. And so I'm not quite a beginner, but I like to keep my mind fresh and open to things as if I am a beginner. Because even though I have a lot of experience with this, I don't have experience with all of it. But I do have a lot of experience with, with 3D modeling. And it's interesting, this past year, after I moved here and made friends with the uh, local makerspace that's trying to get started, that really connected me with a lot of people that wanted things made. This is why you move to a city. Because when I was in Illinois, nobody wanted anything made. There was really no people out there. What am I gonna, am I gonna make something for the trees? So there was no way to make connections and finding people that wanted to make things. And so it wasn't really able, uh, there were several years there where I was, I just made a few things here and there for myself on my Flash Forge Creator Pro. But out here, I have a lot of people interested in me making things for them. And I've developed a bit of a, a quick reputation of doing that. So it's not too surprising that I've been able to offload a few smaller prints onto here. Now, the thing is though, it is kind of big because I've actually decided to step away from the makerspace because the makerspace, honestly, when I really look at it, every single custom thing I've made for somebody that came to the makerspace, they um, were kind of insane. No, I mean the first, yeah. And even the most recent one, um, he seemed kind of odd, but I worked through the first like eight versions of prototypes with him and got like a product going. But uh, he, he wouldn't really listen to the fact that you did steal the idea. He, so he wouldn't really listen to that. And then I also had a much better idea that was far more mechanically reasonable and he didn't want that. And then a few weeks ago, he messaged me saying that he was going to quit his job and wanted to do this full time. And I'm just like, I can't handle these people that they make, they want me to make something small and then they want to make a living off of it in a week. And so I'm going to step away from the makerspace because the makerspace seems to attract crazies. And instead I'm going to focus on doing tiny things at home with these, like for instance, my friend who runs a music shop and wants to have custom mandolin picks. And 
then also maybe I'll sell light fixtures locally or a little bit of hardware stuff. But here's the thing that I'm really thinking about. I'm going to enjoy making tiny stuff with this and these might end up eventually using recycled filament from two liter bottles and such or minced up milk crates. And then I think I don't really need the three printers that the Makerspace has because they have Ender 5 Pros or Ender 5s, I guess. And they're reasonable sized printers, quite nice. But I always find myself either printing something that can print on this or it's too big for that. Because either I'm printing something small or I'm printing a piece of armor that would need to be made out of like five parts on that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these to pay for themselves. The video has already paid for itself. The first video has kind of revitalized my YouTube channel. I'm really amazed by that. And it's made $80. So they've already paid for themselves thanks to the YouTube channel, but they need to pay for themselves thanks to their own hard work, their ability to turn plastic into useful stuff. Speaking of that, we're already up to 16 successful prints. So these things are, and th that's only on this one. The other one I still need to get going. And I'm hoping to use this to kind of set things right and start over in a nice way where I went down the, uh, the wrong path of helping out of the makerspace and attracting people that we're too focused on how many millions they can make, not million items, how many millions of dollars they can make just by selling a few or just selling the idea. And I'm going to go more towards the practical side where the idea is nobody owns this design. Everybody can use this. I'll just make them and give them out at a much lower price than Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or anyone can do because they sell them for $3. Maybe I'll sell them for 25 cents. And then those could be something that just on the off chance that this thing happens to be not working, I'll have it print that. And then once these have paid for themselves, and this is working out great because I had just got a job working in IT for enterprise hard hardware, working on servers and moving equipment and stuff like that. And I'm getting paid quite well with that. Well, I mean, okay. It's more than my YouTube channel. You guys probably wouldn't be able to live off of it, but since me and Thais are so frugal, that several hundred dollars a month is just like an astronomical amount because we live our lives where we build and build and build. And so with $300 a month, not only does that make it to where we don't have to lose money on paying for rent of the apartment and stuff like that, but also I get to invest in tools and I get to buy things that'll add like a snowball effect, you know, because I still have stuff that I bought back in 2016 thermal cameras and interesting like like me tutorial tools and stuff that'll just they'll be around for almost forever and they'll always stick with me and and we're just continually building up and I think that the next level of building up will be to have these and never get away from tiny 3d printers because these are such a good such a good deal but to also skip past the uh, normal the, the modern normal size 3d printers and go towards like almost a half meter size 3D printer. Something like the, was it the Anycubic Cobra Max or one of those ones. And which are about $600 for that 3D printer. But I could do pieces of armor. I could do things that are full sized. I could print a, a full sized computer cabinet or whatever. And so I think that that would be the best thing. Focus on tiny things, especially tiny things, which I could, I could actually offer a service because part of the IT job I have, I have access to a lot of uh, compact disks, which need to be chipped and shredded to save the, to get rid of the data. And those happen to be, was it polystyrene or whatever the, um, whatever the plastic is, 
you can technically 3D print with that. So what if I were to then take the resulting chips from those CDs and get into business making my own filament and then making them into nice little, I guess you'd call them jelly bean components, where they're just little universal things that a lot of people will be wanting. You can sell 10 packs of them for a third of the price of the new ones. And I think that's a pretty cool idea. I'm excited about this. And especially because my IT job for enterprise hardware is very come and go because, you know, like you build the, you build the data center and then it works. The company has their own people that take care of it. But then you got to tear it down and move it across Philadelphia or something like that. And that's the stage we're in right now where we're, we're ripping out all these cabinets and carting them around and moving them, throwing them into vans and stuff. It is intense. But it really helps that I don't have to rely entirely on this because that was another reason why I quit helping at the uh, bringing my 3D modeling services to the makerspace as much because I realized that me trying to make a living off of this, it was kind of crushing it. And at the very least, it was crushing the fun. Yeah. So everything looks pretty darn exciting in the future. And th these things are printing so well, so well. The, the strength of the parts are great. I'm just so happy. And I feel bad that I haven't been able to spend as much time on this lately, but I've been working that really cool IT job, moving servers and moving like radio equipment and stuff like that. So as long as you guys are okay, there won't be as too many videos for the next few weeks. And then I'm hoping I'm gonna finally, when the time is right, I'm gonna sit down with the other 3D printer and we're gonna see if we can get that thing working. And I kind of feel like by that time, this thing might already pay for itself. I mean, it's already paid for itself in fun and capabilities, but I might already have enough little jobs that come and go, like those mandolin picks, that this thing will already pay for itself by that time. So I might be able to justify getting a bigger 3D printer pretty soon. I think I should stick myself with this though, because the limitations bring so much creative joy. If I just got a big 3D printer, then it'd be too easy to focus on big things. But this little 3D printer, it makes me focus on doing the tiny things right. Because whenever I went to Printables and Thingiverse, I couldn't find this and I almost thought I had to make it. And then I had to go to a Google image search to see if anybody's made it, which redirected me back to an, a disconnected one on Printables, which wasn't quite good because it required a bunch of screws and stuff. And so then I modified it to be this. So now that's one more item that whenever you have a 3D printer, you can now look up on Thingiverse and you can have, oh, you can just have it. It's there and it works so perfectly. I can help you justify your 3D printing purchases slowly by doing this. So eventually I'm wanting to make these 3D printers into a little mini hardware store. Cause at the moment it's so hard to find a good print for things. But since I happen to be an expert in 3D modeling, this stuff is, this is the kind of products that I can design. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video talking about making a living off 3D printing. I'm hoping to sell things on Etsy and especially 3D models from video games. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See ya.